all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, Femininity Coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So what we got for you today, I'm going to show you a clip. And this clip is actually from a movie. Um, I forgot the exact name of it, but there's a movie that was made in 2014. And I thought this clip was really potent. And a lot of people responded uh, as well because it kind of hits you where you live. And what we're really talking about today is why black women are upset at black men for checking out. They don't like passport bros. They don't like when black men check for other races of women. They don't like when black men show love or appreciation or anything like that to other women. Um, they don't like it when the men get their needs met by other women when they're in relationships with them, i.e. quote unquote cheating. And you'll notice that sometimes I say get your needs met because when it's a situation that predicates and precedes a man going and saying, you know what? I got to get this need met. And it's not even necessarily sexual, but sexual energy has a lot to do with it. Uh, that's when, you know, we're talking about getting a need met in that instance. He's getting something from another woman that he isn't getting from you, although he wants to get it from you. And this is really where Black women have a problem with Black men. Regardless, it doesn't even have to be a cheating, so-called cheating situation, but just them opting out, just black men sort of opting out or checking out or not checking for black women like they used to. And it's 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 getting on. I'm not going to say getting on their nerve. It's angering and upsetting black women and it's really hurting their egos. But before I keep talking, I want y'all to see the video that I'm talking about, the little clip. And you may or may not have seen it, but I thought it was, I thought it was awesome. So here we go. Is she thinner than me? You have a lot in common. So she's not younger than me. She's not skinnier than me. And she's not prettier than me. Then why couldn't it just be me? Because she's softer than you. She's quieter than you. She doesn't yell at me. She doesn't. Call me an idiot or tell me to shut up all the time. She listens to me. She's nice to me. She doesn't make me. And to be quite honest. Is she thinner than me? You have a lot in common. So she's not younger than me. She's not skinnier than me. And she's not prettier than me. Then why couldn't it just be me? Because she's softer than you. She's quieter than you. She doesn't yell at me. She doesn't call me an idiot or tell me to shut up all the time. She listens to me. She's nice to me. She doesn't make me. Let me stop sharing that. This is the relationship between black men and black women on the whole. That right there, what I just showed you. Black women are running around now that they've realized that black men are going other places and they're getting their needs met with other women. Now they're upset. So she's not prettier than me. She's not skinnier than me. She's not thin. You know what I mean? That's what black women, these women don't look better than me. And that's becoming a lie. Those women do look better because they look like women. And black women, culturally speaking, for the most part, don't like to look like women. They like to look like caricatures of women or, or parodies of women. So that's starting not to be true either because black women don't accept the way that they look. They don't accept their own femininity and their softness and their beauty that black women have naturally. And we cover it and we get rid of it. There was a time where we could say that those other women don't, 
They aesthetically they don't look better than us. And and for a long time, up until very recent years, that was so true. So true. Like a black dude didn't want to mess with another woman. You know, if she did, it was like she got a black girl body, though. You know what I'm saying? Or she got a black girl, like she looked like a black girl. But without all the drama, without all the foolishness, without all of the craziness, without all of the masculinity, without all of the challenges to him, without all of these different things that he can't tolerate from you because it's not womanly, it's not feminine, it's not beautiful, it's not his muse, it's his competition. He doesn't want to compete with you. He doesn't want to compete with the woman that he wants to make his wife and the mother of his children. He doesn't want to compete with her. He want to build with her. Y'all are too busy competing. She says, and why didn't it, couldn't have just been me? That's what black women are wondering. Why you got to go passport bros? Why you got to go over there to get that woman and she looked like me because she don't act like you. And he said, he said, because she's softer than you. She's quieter than you. So he starts naming off the attributes of what? Femininity. In other words, she's feminine. And my masculinity is activated with her in a way that it's not activated with you. She's softer than you. But before he started saying that, she said she's pretty to me. He said, you got a lot in common. And that's what black men are saying. The women, the other women, y'all got something in common. She melanated. She got the body. She got the look. I'm going to have melanated kids with her. All of that. You got things in common, you women. Now she want trying to figure out, well, what else is it? This is why the stupid panels and the stupid questions over and over and over, the same question. Why couldn't it have just been me? Because she's softer than you. She's quieter than you. She has a softness, a gentleness. She listens to me. She listens to me. She don't yell at me all the time or tell me to shut up or call me an idiot. In other words, I'm not constantly getting emasculated around her like I'm doing with you. What do black women like to do? You ain't this. You ain't that. You ain't no man. You ain't da 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 da. It's a constant berating and emasculating of who he is, no matter what he does, no matter what kind of stride he make, no matter where he begin or where he end up or how far along on the journey he is to fulfilling his purpose as a man and doing things as a man and getting his life together. It don't matter if he's 16 or 56. It don't matter where he at in life or where you at in life. You always think you better than him. So you always talk down to him. You don't know how to be a woman. You think you're supposed to be able to yell and scream and, 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 and emasculate. Rip the man's testicles off and put them in your purse. You carry him around. He got to ask you for him so he can feel like a man at some point. Then you wonder why you're not getting out of him what you want to get out of him. What you got out of him in the beginning of the relationship. That's when in the beginning of the relationship you was faking like you was feminine. That's why he was giving you masculine energy. But now, well, you know, you done got comfortable and you done jumped out the window. You done came out your little trick bag now. So now you masculine and you think you're running the show. Well, he give you four peas for what? You got the four peas, don't you? This is why men are turned off when you get to talking about what you can do when your money and your th- because it's masculine. He not looking for that for you. All of those things are not important to him in a relationship. And they don't tell him who you are as a woman. But what he is coming to understand is how masculine you are and the fact that you don't want to change that situation. So instead of working with you, trying to figure out how to do this with you, what what he's doing is, I'll just go get it from another woman where I don't have to fight her. Y'all want black men to fight you. To see his kids, he got to fight you. 
To be your husband, he got to fight you. To be your daddy, he got to fight you. To be your son, he got to fight you. To just have a regular conversation sometime with you, he got to fight you. Everything is a fight. Everything is a battle. Everything he named in that clip that was going on between him and his wife, this is, this is black women's basic default with black men. This is your default with him. It's not, excuse me, it's not time for you to get mad at him. It's time for you to shape up or ship out. And as a matter of fact, he's deciding to ship out because he might not be passport bros. Everybody ain't passport bros. But what he might be doing is saying, I'm just not, I, I'm just opting out of you. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going to another country. I don't have, I don't feel like moving over there or even want to be in a different culture. But I do want a different kind of woman and I'm just not going to deal with black women. Well, I try my hand with another woman. If she do the same thing, she do the same. But I'm going to try at least I'm gonna have a different problem with a different woman. What I'm gonna have, I'm not gonna have the same problem with you because black men have been complaining about this for decades now about how masculine you are and how all your lack of femininity, your lack of dignity, your lack of womanliness, your inability to display femininity and proper womanhood and things of that nature. And he's tired. You should be tired. It's hard work being something you not. You're not men. And I don't know why y'all so caught up in trying to do things that men do and be like, why fighting is tiresome. Try to be easy one time. Try to be soft. We need talking Why you got to talk over him. Why you got to dominate when it ain't no need for you to do that? Everything that man said in that clip is what black women do on routine as a group and individually in their relationships. Y'all do it too. And then you wonder why he went and saw, got another woman. She don't look better than me, but she is better than you though. Maybe she don't got the little body you got. Maybe she don't. Maybe she ain't that little so-called uh, eight, nine, ten, and like you think you are. I mean, she might be a five. She might be a workable six. But you know what else she is? She feminine. She a good woman. He saw a good heart. He saw good value. He saw a woman that listened. He saw a woman that was support. He saw a woman that knew how to be a woman and didn't mind being a woman for him. That's what he saw. That's where he went. Somewhere where he, his manhood and his masculinity and his faux peas could be appreciated. That he could be celebrated for it, loved for it, respected for it, honored for it. Even if it's just for a little while. Even if it's just for a little while. If you were giving him that, it, he would be hard pressed to go get a need met that's being met. You're hard pressed to go get a need met that somebody needing. You're hard pressed to do that. That that's a hard sell. You over you over somebody else doing what now? Get my needs met, but do your wife do this? Yeah. But it ain't that hard of a sell when it's like I don't want to leave because so much has been invested and I actually do love this woman. It's not like I don't love her. It ain't like I don't want to be with her. But I, even if it, for 10 minutes, I got to go to get femininity from, because I beg my wife for it and she don't want to do it. This other woman to do it. And I ain't got to beg her. And it feel good.
just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. The next thing that uh, I want to bring to everybody's attention is the fact that you can now go to the crimsoncure.com and you can go and get your copy of Reclaiming a Black Feminine, Lies of Feminism and the Road to Recovery. You can go right now to the crimsoncure.com. The link is in the description box and pick up your copy of this book. All right. I know that we cannot wait to get this copy. Get your copy of this book in your hand. So we are working day and night to bring you the most wonderful work that you, this excellent work that you all definitely deserve. So once again, the link is in the description box, crimsoncure.com to go get your copy today. Also, please let's not forget about the holding Black Lives Matter accountable. We are still trying to get to our next milestone, which is going to be that 15,000 signatures so that we can kind of grease the wheels on this six step initiative to help and support black communities all across the United States. The link to the petition is also in the description box. So head on down there, pick up your copy of the book. And while you're at it, Go ahead and sign, share, or contribute to the petition as well. And jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Pick up your copy of Reclaiming the Black Feminine, The Lies of Feminism and the Road to Recovery from Kendra Davis. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.